What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Homebill Workshop. Today, Haley and I are going to be working on these awesome elm coat racks that are going to live in her room. Stick around, check it out. So over the past couple of weeks, we've been doing a little bit of rearranging in Haley's bedroom, getting a different bed, moving some things around, reconfiguring some stuff, and we had to remove an existing coat rack and now we need to replace it, but we need to make one that's a little bit different size. We found this piece of elm here. I think is gonna work out good once we cut this piece in half. We'll be able to make two shorter coat racks to replace the longer one that we had to remove. In the overall big picture of this project, it's really not gonna be all that difficult. All we're really going to be doing is preparing this board, drilling some holes, gluing in some pegs, applying some kind of a finish to get a usable coat rack for my daughter's room but it's not really about just that project. I want to involve her with some of the aspects of putting this thing together. And there's a couple techniques that I want to share with you guys in getting this board ready. You can see right now, it's got a little wobble to it. We need to address that, but I just wanted to let you guys know, this is not a difficult thing, but it's not about that. <laughs> like that country music song, she thinks we're fishing, something like that. That's what it is. Now, to first address this wobbliness, technical term. <laughs> I could just send this to the drum sander or the planer, but since the bottom is not flat, it's going to have a tendency to want to twist as it's running through either of those machines. So we need to stabilize it somehow so that it can't move while we flatten it. Before I send this through the drum sander, I want to rip this piece down into its two individual pieces. I'm going to make two narrower coat racks. Now the reason that I want to rip it down first is because I believe over the width of this piece, the amount of twist is magnified the wider it gets. So I believe by ripping it down and flattening each piece individually, I'm going to actually be removing less material. At least that's the theory, and that's what I'm going with. <laughs> Obviously, since this is a live edge, both sides are not parallel. So in order to figure out where I need to cut this in half, I'm basically going to draw a straight line from one end of the board to the other on the top and the bottom edge. And then I can have a solid reference line to measure the center off of. So this piece kind of tapers out at this end. So I'm actually going to have two lines that go out at an angle that'll give me two relatively evenly shaped pieces. Now there is this one kind of knotty area right here and my line does run right across the very bottom edge of that. So in order to prevent any difficulties when I start cutting. I don't want anything to fall out of there. I'm going to use some CA glue. This one in particular, it was sent to me by Starbond. This is the brown CA glue. It's almost out. This stuff is amazing. Link in the video description if you guys would like to get some for yourself and check it out. This stuff's cool. I'll just fill in all the areas around the knot and then we'll give it a couple of shots of accelerator to harden the CA glue and we're ready to cut. Now I'm going to take those pieces and place them on this little sled and you can see that there's still some wobble in there. So now we're going to use some shims to basically shim that wobble out of there. And I'll hold everything in place with some hot glue, making sure that I glue the shims as well as the piece so that they don't move around. Reload. As I'm gluing this, a little bit of hindsight, I probably should have done this before I cut them to length. Might have been a little bit better to leave them long. That way, if any glue gets stuck to the side, I don't have to worry about cleaning it off. I better just trim it flush and the glue residue would be gone. Now I'm just gonna have a little bit more work probably cleaning the glue off the side of the boards. Not a huge deal, but probably could have made it go just a teeny bit faster. 
So now we've got these things where they can't rock around. They're on a nice flat surface. That way as they run through the planer, or in my case the drum sander, it's going to remove only the high spots until we get down to the nice flat surface. And there's no way that any of the twist can be affected as it runs through the pressure rollers of your machine. Now I'm going to run these pieces through my drum sander. This exact same process can be used on a planer as well. Now I'll remove the pieces from the sled and then send it through the drum sander again to flatten the opposite side. We're almost ready to start laying out for the shaker pegs. One thing I want to do before I call for backup in laying out those pegs is I want to address this bottom edge. Now since the top is a live edge, kind of has a little bit of a tapered look to it, I don't want to leave the bottom just a plain squared off edge. I want to spend just a few minutes and kind of just rough this edge up a little bit just to make it look maybe a teensy bit more natural. I'm not exactly trying to replicate the live edge, but I'm gonna just lightly carve this side just to give it a teeny bit rougher look. I think by doing this, it'll make it blend in a little bit better with the live edge, and it won't look quite so squared off and unnatural. Oh, there you are. Reinforcements are here. It's time to do some measuring. This is exactly 22 inches. Perfect, it is. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna draw a straight line down through the, about the center. We're gonna use this ruler just as a guide. Here's the other one. Perfect. Now we need to make the marks where we're gonna drill the holes for the shaker pegs. First, we're going to measure in two inches from the end and make a little mark right on your pencil line. Yep, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. We're gonna measure two inches in from the end. All right, that's gonna be where our two outer pegs are gonna go. Now we just need to put two more in the middle. So we're gonna have four of them all the way across. But we want them to be spaced evenly, right? So it doesn't look weird. We don't want like one right here, like two here, one over here, that'd be weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this you measured at 22 inches, right? Mm -hmm. What's 22 minus two? Minus two? Mm -hmm. 20. And then if we take another two inches, 20 minus two is? 18. We have 18 inches that we need to divide up. We're gonna divide that 18 inches by three, and that gives us six inches. So, now we know that we can go every six inches and that our spacing is gonna be even. So we'll line it up at our first peg and we'll measure over six inches. Well, six plus six. Six plus six is 12, right? Remember that? That's because I was the homeschool teacher for a while and I'm not very good in math. <laughs> now we have one, two, three, four, and they're all spaced evenly. So we're just gonna do the exact same thing on the other piece. All we need to do now is make a little punch mark to give the drill bit somewhere to grab onto. To do that, we're gonna use bum, bum, an automatic center punch. Ah. Two. After marking where we need to drill all these holes, I thought we'd throw it back a little old school and grab the brace. Here, you turn, I'll hold. Mm. This is hard. Is this the old school way? This is. This is the old school way. This is called the brace. This one used to belong to your great grandpa. This is taking a long time. Everybody get ready for a two and a half day long video. <laughs> we're, we're close. A little bit farther, I think, and this, this one will be good. Turn that thing. It's a Haley power drill. 
All right, I think that's probably good. Do you think it would be faster if we used the drill press for the rest? Mm -hmm. I do too. With all the holes drilled, we just need to go back and do a little bit more measuring for the mounting holes. One, two, three. <laughs> Same thing on this guy. We can just basically count three in. Yeah, you could do that too. One, two, three. Now we need to do a little bit of sanding just to remove the pencil lines. We want to make sure that we sand up the edges nice and smooth. There's no sharp edges, anything like that. It won't take very long. You ready? Never He's already ahead of me. It. I need to be <laughs> Isn't this the funnest part? No, this is the worst part. <laughs> But it is the necessary part of every project. If you look at the grain of the wood, mm -hmm. what kind of shape is that? It's like zigzaggy lightning bolts, right? Whoa! You see that? That's one way you can tell this is elm. Not all wood has that kind of zigzaggy. Look at it. Zigzag. Like maple and stuff like that doesn't quite have that zigzag. Now if we only had some shaker pegs to glue into these coat racks. Shaker pegs for you! Thank you! I like to use my finger. I'm just gonna do this. One person uses the glue, next person uses the hammer. Just gonna wipe up with the squeeze out really quick and we'll let this dry. Crazy why they call it squeeze out, right? Because yeah. it squeezes out? Nah. <laughs> so now we're ready to apply some finish, just keeping it super simple, super quick. Good old spray lacquer. And our cool little coat racks are complete. A couple coats of lacquer, these things are sealed up really good. All we need to do now is really install them where they're gonna live in Haley's room. What do you think? You think these will work out pretty good? Yeah, I think they'll work out for guitars. <laughs> <laughs> and hanging coats, obviously. It's like, da 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 coat hanger. So thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this project. I know I did. I hope Haley did. I have always such a good time working with Haley in the workshop. We have such a fun time, lots of laughs. I hope this video helps inspire you to get out in the workshop with the younger ones in your life and make some cool stuff. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. I have no head. Ugh. <laughs> it helps if you start the camera recording when you actually start doing the work. We got glue in the hair. This is what happens. We got, <laughs> we got hair glue. <laughs> Whoa. All right. You just have to keep keep drilling like that. Eventually. This is gonna take a long time. Lacquer, 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 <laughs> lacquer. Okay, hold it down. Something. Something that qualifies to the video. Something that qualifies to the video. <laughs> Dad, <help. laughs> High five. I want you to say that and pretend to be interrupted by me casually walking. All right. <clears throat> Ready, set, go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, we're going to work on some coat racks for my daughter's room. Something that we... <laughs> What's going on, Dado? Oh, hey there. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> We're playing a game with the little autofocus thingy. It has face detection. And right now it's on me and Haley keeps trying to steal my face detection. <laughs> oh, you stole it. It only does one. <laughs> oh, I got no! it. <laughs> okay, one, one five. <laughs> it's like a pizza pie.